Hello everyone. Today I'm going to discuss about the lung sounds and heart sounds in the diagnostic clinical examination. So in this topic, I'm going to discuss about the what are the lung sounds, what is the normal lung sounds and what are the abnormal lung sounds. And also what are the heart sounds, so what is the normal and also what are the abnormals, where we are going to find the, these normal heart sounds and also normal heart lung sounds. So first, before going to start about the lung sounds and the heart sounds, just I want to explain, briefly explain about the, which instrument we are going to use for the lung sounds and also heart sounds. So most commonly, so whenever we want to examine the lung sounds and other heart sounds, so the best instrument only is the, is the stethoscope. So it is a medical device, auscultine, also used for the auscultation. The process of measuring the heart sounds and also lung sounds is called as the auscultation. So for these uh, instruments, we are going to use for mainly for the heart sounds and lung sounds, as well as we are going to check the heart rate and also breath rate and also respiratory rate. So if you see the, the parts of the, the stethoscope, so this, this stethoscope has five major parts. So these five major parts are, so it's the first one is the diaphragm. So this is the diaphragm. So this is the, the lowest part of the, the stethoscope is the called as the diaphragm. So this diaphragm is going to use for the high frequency sounds. Most of the time we are going to use the diaphragm to check the heart rate and also breath rates. But sometimes we are going to use the, the bell also. So you can see the bell and also is going to be the, the drum. Here is the drum and tubing and also earpiece. So these are the five parts of the stethoscope. So when we are going to use the bell. So this bell is going to use for the, to check the low frequency sounds. So diaphragm is going to check for the high frequency sounds. And also is going to bell you are going to use for the low frequency sounds. And also next one is the drum and tubing this, the tubing. And also this one is the, so whatever we heard the sounds, so it transmits through the tube and also it reached to the, our ear pieces. So we can hear the sound easily. So with the stethoscope, we are going to measure the heart rate and also heart sounds. And also respiratory rate and also respiratory sounds, which are nothing but the lung sounds. So this uh, medical uh, device we are going to use for the auscultation of the lung and also auscultation of the heart. So first coming to the pulmonary auscultation, also called as the, uh, we are going to check for the heart lung sounds. So before going to the uh, checking the lung sounds, we have to know the what are the important points and also what is the uh, do's and don'ts. So we have to know about the auscultation of the lung. So this auscultation is perhaps the most important and also effective clinical techniques you will ever learn and also for evaluating the patient respiratory function. So maybe this one is with the, this device, we are going to assess and also we are going to evaluate the, the patient respiratory system. And also before begin, so there are certain things you should keep in mind. So before starting the lung sound assessment and also pulmonary auscultations, so you have to uh, like a, keep in mind some important points. So for this checking the lung sounds, so it should be the room should be quiet environment. So it should not be in the noisy and also if it is any visitor room and also if anything noise is there. So we have to try to uh, close the uh, room and also we have to like uh, hear the lung sounds, normal lung sounds and abnormal lung sounds. While auscultating, so we should be room should be is a very kinky and also calm and also quiet. And also if any, uh, like uh, any noise because of the any like a TV or radio or any sound system. So we have to avoid and also it should be is a calm. So that is the main area for the checking for the auscultations. And another important thing is the position also very important. So the position should be for the auscultation sitting up in the bed or on the cart and also ensuring ESRS chest not leaning into against to the anything. So it should be uh, like a comfortable position. Patient should be comfortable. And also sitting up in the bed or cot. So is going to be high sitting positions. And if it's not possible to lean to, uh, for example, it should not be lean against to the any chair and to the bed. But in those conditions, so ask them to do in the comfortable positions, but we can take only partial assessment. So if in they lean to anything to against to anything, so sometimes we cannot hear the clear sound. So may it interfere the sounds. So, and also while placing the stethoscope, stethoscope should be touching the patient bare skin. So if it's placed the bare skin, 
So whenever possible, you may hear the rubbing of the patient's clothes against the stethoscope and misinterpret them as a normal sounds. So it may use the abnormal sounds. So if we touch, if it's possible, the patient should be in the bare skin. So then only we are going to hear the, the exact sound. But if sometimes if the dress may interfere or maybe is a inter, uh, misinterpret the, the abnormal sounds. So, and also you may wish to wet the patient's chest and also hair with a little warm water and also to decrease the sounds caused by the friction of the hair against the stethoscope. So sometimes while checking the lung sounds because of the who are having the chest hair, so may interfere the sounds. So it may use the friction also. So if you want to prevent these friction, so slightly we have to wet the patient chest, uh, the wet a the hair area. So we are going to prevent the, any abnormal sounds and also friction we can, we are going to avoid. So that's, these are the precautionary measures while assessing the like a lung sounds. And also always ensure the patient should be comfortable. And also be considerate and also warm the diaphragm of your stethoscope with your hands before auscultation. So if sometimes if it is any, uh, like a, uh, if it's not clear, so sometimes it may interfere the sound. So that's why before giving that, we have to rub the uh, diaphragm area and also stethoscope. So we are going to give the, like a, make them into clear, like a, to hear the clear sound. So as you are auscultating your patient, please keep in your mind, it's the two things we have to keep in the mind. So these are the, is it the normal sound? Are abnormal sound, or is there any uh, the sounds are decreased? Or, and also one more second one is, uh, are there any abnormal or advantageous sound breath sounds? First one is we have to check is it the normal sound, or is it increased or decreased? Or another one is the abnormal sounds. So these things we have to think before checking the uh, lung sounds. So while checking the ascal, uh, like breath sounds, so we have to check the proper in the sitting positions. So if the sitting in the posterior check or in the post posterior chest wall, if you are checking, so ask the patient to cross the arms in the front. So if it's possible, so then only we are going to hear the sounds in the backside, the clear manner. And also auscultate the uh, auscultate using the diaphragm of your stethoscope. So we have to use the diaphragm for the auscultations and ask the patient to not speak and also breathe deeply through the mouth. So if they take the, any deep uh, like inspiration through the mouth, so it's going to be hyperventilated. So may chance to get the normal, like a, the, we cannot hear the normal sounds, it may give the abnormal sounds. So be careful while giving the, assessing the patients, the patient should not take the, like a, the more ventilation and deep breath, long deep breath, it may hyperventilate and also you should listen at least one full breath in the each locations. So have we have more than uh, 12 to 14 locations are there to hear the breath sounds. So at least the one breath we have to heard in the different different locations, then only we are going to identify the where is the normal uh, like a lung sounds and where having the abnormal lung sounds. And also it is important that you always compare what you hear with the opposite side. So if you compare to the right side, if you heard the sound to the right side, then compares to the left side. So then only we can understand where they're having the abnormal sound. Is it the like a <clears throat> right lung affected? <clears throat> or maybe is the upper lobe or middle lobe or lower lobe. So then we can compare with the same with the right lung. So then only we can understand where they're having the secretions, where they're having the obstruction. So where they're having obstruction due to fluid or air or mucus. So where we can clearly understand, it depends upon the involvement of the segment. So if you divide into the lung and also the different different lobes are there and also in the lobes, again, it's going to divide into the segments are there. So we have to like auscultate each part of the lung. So then only we can understand and also we can differentiate the, what is the cause to factor for the abnormal breath sounds. And as examples, if you are listening to the apex, left apex, and also you should follow the through by the comparing the what you heard with the about the right apex. If you check the right apex, yeah, then we have to check for the left apex also. Or in the upper lobe, or also we have to compare the upper lobe of the uh, like a right lung and also left lung. <clears throat> so about the auscultation locations, so these locations are going to be is a 12 to 14 locations we can see in the like in the anterior and also posterior chest wall. So at least from the 12 to 14 areas, at least six locations we have to assess, then only we are going to find the abnormal and also normal heart sounds. 
So begin by auscultating the apices of the lungs. So it's going to be the moving from side to side and comprising as you approach the bases. So that means we have to check at least minimum the six areas. In the six areas, if you see here in the anterior chest wall and also posterior chest wall, so at least we have to any six points, six areas we have to uh, so auscultate at least in the one area and also is at least in the one breath we have to check. So how is the breath sound? Is a normal or abnormal sound? So if you see in the anterior, <clears throat> so we can found in the, the at least the five to six areas. So here we are going to found in the second intercostal space and also fifth intercostal space and also seventh. In, so here is the place of locations are there according to the surface anatomy. If you have an idea of the surface anatomy, we have to place it the places so we can hear the, the, the normal and abnormal sounds. So these are the points to assess and to locate the uh, like a, the breath sounds. So different types of the breath sounds are there. We are going to discuss each, all the breath sounds, normal breath sounds, as well as the abnormal breath sounds. So if you see the normal breath sounds, so these are traditionally organized into the categories based on the their intensity and also pitch and location and also inspirated to the expiratory ratio. So these breath sounds are created by the turbulent airflow. So this is going to be depends on categorized into these are the four categories are the tracheal breath sounds, vascular breath sounds, and also bronchovascular breath sounds. So these breath sounds depends upon the intensity and also depends upon the location. So and also inspiratory expiratory ratio. So if you see in the inspiration, the air moves into the into progressively the smaller airways. If you take the breath in the breath into the, the bronchioles, and also the then is going to the, the small airways. So because of the airways, smaller airways with the alveoli as it's the final locations. So where the oxygen is going to be, is a gas exchange takes place. So that is called as the alveoli. So it's going to reach the alveoli. So as the air hits the walls of the airways, the turbulence is created, then it produces the sound. So the normal how, uh, lung, lung sounds, if you take the breath in, so from the trachea, from the trachea to the, is going to the lung, so through the <clears throat> primary bronchus, secondary bronchus, and tertiary bronchus, from the tertiary bronchus, is going to the, into the bronchioles, from the bronchioles is going to reach the final destination will be in the alveoli. So in the alveoli, the gases exchange takes place. So that means carbon dioxide is converted into oxygen. That oxygen is, is going to be supplied to and transferred into the heart so through the pulmonary vein, so there is going to be gas exchange takes place. So how the air enter into the bronchiae, so the primary bronchus, <clears throat> then it reached to the alveoli. So because of the hitting the walls, so it gives the turbulence. So the turbulence is nothing but is called as the, the sound, it produces the sounds. But in the expirations, the moving, the air is moving to the opposite direction. So that means that the carbon dioxide is the gas is going to be is a come out through the there's a reverse flow through the expirations. So it's towards the is a progressively larger airways. So that means the carbon dioxide starts from the alveoli. So from there is going to enter into the the larger walls. So from to the tertiary bronchioles and also secondary bronchioles and travel. So it comes to the the larger airways. So in the larger airways, what will happen? The turbulence is going to be created, but there is going to be the less because of the, in the inspiration is going to be the, the more turbulence. Here is going to be the less turbulence is created because of the small to the larger, uh, like a bronchioles it comes. So because of these expiratory sounds are the, uh, like a, uh, these are going to be normal expiratory breath sounds are the quieter than the inspiratory breath sounds because of these uh, expiratory sounds are going to be the quiet because of turbulence is less. Inspiratory sounds are going to be turbulence is more, so the sound the sound is going to be a bit uh, like a louder. So what are the bronchial and also what is the tracheal and uh, tracheal breath sounds? So these tracheal breath sounds. So if we are going to see the four uh, sounds, this is the tracheal and also bronchial sounds, and also bronchovesicular and vesicular sounds. So these tracheal uh, breath sounds are very loud and relatively high pitched. So these are going to be high pitched. So the inspiratory and expiratory sounds are more or less equal in length. So these are going to be heard in the, the trachea and also we can see here. So these are going to heard in the surrounding the trachea, but these inspiratory during the inspiration and expressions are more or less equal in length. So they're going to be, so sometimes it's going to be more or sometimes going to be less, but in the yeah, equal uh, the sounds are going to be happening. 
So they can be heard over the trachea, which is not routinely auscultated. So we are going to heard the this tracheal. So these are the uh, so this is going to heard at the tracheal levels. So because of this is a not a normal uh, normally routinely auscultated. So in the abdominal conditions also sometimes may hear, but most commonly we are going to hear the bronchovesicular vesicular. Most of the lung is going to be heard about the vascular and also bronchovesicular. So this is very rarely we can heard. So coming to the vesicular breath sounds. So you can see the vesicular breath sounds. So most of the breath sounds also bronchial are going to be heard over the bronchial region. So this is the bronchial sounds. And also if you come to the <clears throat> vesicular, most of the lungs is going to be heard about the vesicular sounds. And bronchial vesicular sounds are going to be heard in the particular areas. So this one is going to be, So about the vesicular breath sounds. So these vesicular breath sounds is the, the major breath sounds and is heard almost over the lungs. So most of the lung is we are going to hear the this vesicular breath sounds. So these are going to be the soft and low pitched and inspiratory sounds are the longer than the expiratory sounds. So inspiratory sounds are going to be longer so than the expiratory sounds. So what because of is going to be prolonged time and duration also going to be prolonged. So these vesicular breath sounds may be harsh slightly longer if there is a rapid deep ventilations. So if, for example, if anybody work out and exercise, so these sounds are going to be is a longer and also is going to be is the uh, harsher than the, the remaining breath sounds. So it's most commonly heard after the post exercise. If any exercise or maybe any workout, so these sounds are going to be heard in the more uh, frequent than the other times. And also in children who gave the who have the thinner chest wall, if anybody having the thinner chest wall, so these sounds also going to be harsh and also we are going to hurt a bit louder. As well as the vesicular breath sounds may be softer if the patient is frail or the patient is weak or in the elderly or obese or in case of the very muscular conditions. So we are going to hurt these sounds are going to be, is going to be a little bit softer and also in case of the, the patient is weak. So that's the reasons. So we have to understand in that while the differential diagnosis, we can think if the sounds are not uh, like a uh, like often, or maybe we can think about is there any chest wall deformity, or if anybody having a thin chest wall, or in case of the, if the person is weak or obese, so we can easily understand depends upon the breath sounds. So coming to the next one is the bronchial breath sounds. So this bronchial bronchial breath sounds are is a very loud, high pitch, and also sound close to the stethoscope. So these sounds are going to be, so is a little bit of a louder, so, and also is going to be the long and also high pitched. We can hear the high pitched. So there is a gap between the inspiratory and expiratory phase of the respirations. So this uh, we have to understand if any gap that is uh, during the inspiration, breathe in time, so, so, and also breathe out time, is there any gap? So the sound is going to hurt some gap. So that sounds are going called as the bronchial or breath sounds. And also if there is a sounds are heard anywhere other than the, the manubrium, it is usually an indication of the area of the consultation exists. So the consultation is nothing but is any of the spaces, air spaces filled with the, normally is filled with the, like a air. So is there any fluid or any, is there any abnormality also sometimes we are going to hurt this the bronchial sounds. So you can see here most of the time we are going to hear the these bronchial sounds in the, the manubrium sternae. So in the sternum we are going to hear. If other than the sternum, so it indicates the consolidation. Consolidation means we already having any fluid accumulation or any is the abnormal air also. So we can think about the, the bronchial breath sounds. So and also next one is the bronchovesicular breath sounds. So these bronchovesicular breath sounds are sounds of the intermediate intensity and also high pitch. So the pitch also going to be intermediate and also the pitch also going to be is intermediate compared to the, the bronchial sounds. So here the inspiratory and expiratory sounds are in equal length. So this inspiratory and also expiratory both are going to be equal in length. So while assessing, so if it is the longer or if it's the shorter means, so we can easily, so differentially diagnose, so which one is the vesicular sound or which is the bronchial sound, which one is the tracheal sound. So compared to this one is the, it depends upon the inspiratory and expiratory sound. Is there any gap is there or is there an equal like a uh, durations? So it depends on this one, we are going to differentiate the bronchial, uh, different type of the lung uh, sounds. 
So they are best heard in the first and second intercostal space. So if you see here, so this is the first and second intercostal space in the anterior chest wall, but in the posterior chest wall, we are going to hear the in between the scapula. So that is the, here we are going to hear the, the bronchovascular sounds. So we can hear if any, if in somewhere, if this one is intensity and also if it's louder, so it means it's, the, it's not the bronchovascular. So with the bronchial sounds, when, if the bronchial sounds, when these uh, our sounds are heard uh, anywhere other than the, the main stem of the bronchi, it indicates the area of the consolidation. Normally, just now we discussed, is going to hurt in the first and second intercostal space in the anterior chest wall, and also in between the scapula, so it is the normal. So if it is other than these places, so it indicates the, the lung consolidation. So why we have to know? So we have to know the way we are going to hurt these sounds normally. So other than these sounds, other than the, the normal locations, so it indicates in the consolidation or maybe is a fluid accumulation or maybe air or also it may, it may use the, the sound will be different. So it is going to be is called as the other sounds or advanced sounds also we can consider. So are also other abnormal sounds. So just now we discussed the, all the normal sounds. So these abnormal sounds, what is abnormal sounds means? So which are the not normal sounds, just now discuss, so where we are going to hurt bronchial and tracheal, bronchovascular, and also they have in the particular spaces, some are we are going to hurt about the, uh, the manibrium, and also we are going to the trachea and the trachea, and also first and second intercostal spaces are in between the scapula. So these are the normal uh, sounds we are going to hurt. Other than these sounds, if it is not there in the normal places and also normal appearance, and also long, longer duration also, so it's maybe abnormal. So this is going to be, so it is because of the absent, or it's a decreased, or increased, uh, the normal sounds are going to be called as the abnormal breath sounds. So these abnormal breath sounds are going to be heard in the different pathological conditions, such as in case of, this is the ARDS, is a acute respiratory distress syndrome. So most commonly is going to be because of the in abnormality in the lung, if any lung consolidations are in the fibrosis, if the lung is become the fibrosis, unable to, like a, the, uh, uh, like a breathe properly in those conditions because of the severe infections. So if the severe inspection is, is a progress to the is a, uh, acute respiratory distress syndrome. So in those conditions, the, these breath sounds are going to decrease the breath sounds in the late stages. So the breath sounds are going to be decreased in the late stage of the acute respiratory distress syndrome. In this pandemic situation, most of the people are die because of the, this is the abnormal problem. That is the uh, acute respiratory distress syndrome. In those conditions, if you heard, so we are going to heard the abnormal breath sounds. And also in case of the asthma, so the breath sounds are going to be decrease the breath sounds. So all the breath sounds are going to be what are the like a vesicular breath sound, tracheal breath sounds, and also bronchial breath sounds. So these are going to be decreased. So cannot hurt. So these breath sounds. So in especially in case of the asthma, because of the is unable to like the bronchials are going to be restricted. There is no free flow of the turbulence. So it may use the obstruction. So it may chance to get the these breath sounds are going to be and decreased. And also atelectasis, atelectasis means the <clears throat> lung collapse. In course, in case of the lung collapse, so these breath sounds are the, because of the, if the bronchial obstruction is persist, so because of the uh, obstruction in the bronchial walls, the breath sounds are absent unless the atelectasis occurs. So if the, in case of the obstruction, if there is no flow, the lung is going to be collapsed. So, and also it occurs in the right upper lobe in which the, case adjacent the tracheal sound maybe is audible. So here we are going to hurt. So it may chance to is a tracheal sounds may be audible. So in case of the atelectasis. And also in case of emphysema, emphysema is a one of the, is a, is a chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. So in these conditions, the abnormal sounds are going to, so the, the sounds are going to be decreased. And in case of the pleural effusion, so in a accumulation of the water or accumulation of any fluid inside the lungs, so in those conditions also, the breath sounds are going to be decreased or maybe absence of the breath sounds. If the effusion is large, the bronchial sound may be heard. So if you say effusion is more percentage, so the bronchial sounds are going to be heard. And also in case of the pneumothorax, even pneumothorax means any air in the lungs. So any accumulation of the, any trapped air in the, like a bronchial walls, so it is, it may induce the, the breath the sounds are going to be decreased or is the, are going to be absent. So depends upon the, the, uh, 
the pitch, the intensity. So we are going to uh, predict. So is it because of the ARDS or is it because? So we are going to predict the pathological conditions. If you go differentially diagnosis, so the breath sounds we can heard, where the abnormal sounds, in which condition we are going to heard. So what type of the abnormal sound? So we are going to discuss in the here. <coughs> So the breath sounds, the bronchial breath sounds are, is, occurs over the consolidated areas. So consolidated areas means the alveolar airspace are going to be filled with the fluid is. If the fluid is accumulation, so in those conditions, so the bronchial breath sounds are going to occur. <clears throat> so coming to the, the adventitious are also breath sounds are abnormal breath sounds. So, so these are the different type of the breath sounds we can hear in the abnormal conditions. So these are called as the crackles, also called rails. And also next one is the V's, ronchi and strider. So these are the abnormal breath sounds, are also called adventitious breath sounds. So this one is the crackles, also called as rails. So this is like a, how we are going to be like a crack sounds. So we are heard in outside, like how if you make a noise, how we are going to feel. So the same thing we can heard in the lung also because of the pathological uh, progressions. So the crackle R's are the so discontinuous, the non-musical brief sound is heard more commonly on inspirations. During the inspirations, if you are placing the stethoscope under the diaphragm, so we are going to hear like a crackle sound. If you crack something, like if you like a break uh, something with uh, any paper or maybe any like a uh, any hard material, if you break it, any like a thin material, how we are going to break like a crushing something like a plastic paper or like a any polythene paper, how is a hard, so how it make like a chocolate wrapper, so how it's going to make the sound, the same sound we are going to heard during the inspiration because of the crackles. So they can be classified as the fine and also coarse. So this fine is going to be high pitch, soft and also very brief. So this is a high, like a high pitch, this is the fine crackers and also low crackers, that's a coarse means low pitched and also louder and also less brief. So these are the, another like is a, is a coarse voice. So it is going to be heard. And also when listening to crackles, we should pay at special attention to their loudness and pitch duration and number. So how much of, how many times it's getting the crackle sound, timing how much the durations in the during the respiratory cycle. So it's going to be inspiration and also expression. So in this one, so how much time, how much the duration, how much the sound, the loudness. So we have to found it. Uh, so then only we can understand is it the like a fine, like a crackles or maybe it's a coarse crackles. So and also here is, is the cycle location, pattern of the breath from breath, change after the cough or in the shift in the position. So we have to check the by during the coughing time and also if the position change. So we have to find uh, all the like intensity and also pitch. And also we have to check the, the duration and number also we have to check to differentiate the, is it the fine crackles or is because of the coarse crackles. So these crackles are going to may sometimes be normally heard at the anterior lungs basis after the maximal expirations or after prolonged recumbency. So it's after different positions, a prolonged uh, like a uh, sleeping posture. So they may chance to hurt in the normally. So it's the anterior lung base. So we are going to have the anterior lung base at the anterior regions. So and also at after a maximal expiration, after the maximal breath out time. So we are going to hurt these crackles. So this is the like a one type of uh, normal uh, sounds. So what is the mechanism for the, this crackle sound? So the mechanism is the small airways are going to be open during the inspiration. For example, if anybody uh, obstruction in the airways, in case of any like a uh, asthma condition, in case of COPD, chronic bronchitis. So what happened? The bronchioles are going to be constricted. This is going to be small size. So if during the inspiration, what happened? The bronchioles are going to be open. So because of the, it's going to give the turbulence, right? So that time is going to give the, because of the uh, accumulation of the sputum or because of the thickening of the bronchial walls, so it may lead to the, uh, like the opening of the bronchioles. So it's going to give the cracking sound. So the turbulence, because the turbulence, it gives the cracking sounds. So the small airways are open during the inspiration and collapse during the expiration, causing the crackle sound. So it's going to be, collapse means it's going to be closing and also opening time is going to, inspiration time is going to be open. So, but it's not complete opening because of the obstruction of something, because of the sputum, or is there any obstruct mucus, mucus or maybe uh, in case of any like a the bronchial wall thickening. So it may use the, the crackling sound. So another explanation for the crackle is that air bubble through the secretions are is a incompletely closed airways during the expirations. 
so if any air bubble formations if there is no proper closing of the bronchioles during the expirations it, so it may give the <coughs> uh, this crackle sounds so in when we are going to hear this crackle sounds in case of the ARDS acute respiratory distress syndrome in case of asthma and also bronchiectasis chronic bronchitis consolidations early congestive heart failure and also early interstitial lung disease and pulmonary edema so in this pathological conditions we are going to heard about the crackle sounds so again after that after confirming the crackle sound then we have to differentially diagnosis is it the asthma or is it the acute respiratory distress syndrome or chronic bronchitis so these things we have to differentially diagnosis if you know the symptoms if you take proper physical examinations history from the patients and also clinical investigations so all these things are we are going to differentially diagnosis then only we can do the final diagnosis so these are the crackle sounds Uh, about the crackle sounds and types and where and also in which conditions we can hear the crackle sounds so coming to the next one is another abnormal sound is called as the wheeze so how we are going to wheeze sound so these are going to be continuous so just crackles are the not continuous one so these are going to be continuous high pitched and also hissing sounds so for example how the snake is going to make sounds or wheeze or if you are uh, like a snoring how the wheeze is going to come the sound will come so here has going to get the wheezing sound hissing sound and also heard normally on expiration but also sometimes on the inspirations so during it depends upon the like a uh, obstruction or depends upon the abnormality in the lungs so sometimes most of the times is going to heard in the in the expirations but is going to sometimes in the inspirations so they are produced when the air flow through the airways narrowed by the secretions are foreign bodies are obstructive lesions secretions means if any sputum formations if the more sputum inside the like a bronchial walls so if the sputum is obstructed if it is not giving the free flow to the air enter into the bronchioles so that time it going to the v sound and also if any foreign bodies if any foreign bodies means any like if any swallowing the extra other materials then the for example sometimes may swallow the some foreign materials such as sometimes maybe some mosquitoes or maybe some bacteria or virus or something whatever the extra particles so if it is obstructed in the bronchial walls so it may gives the wheezing sound sometimes if they the kids if they sometimes may swallow some small like a button or maybe some coins or because of some food, like a food particles if anything obstructed in the bronchial walls so it may gives the the wheeze and also not note the when the wheeze occurs and also if there is a the change after the deep breath or cough also note if the wheeze is a mono monophonic or suggest to obstruction of the airways or polyphonic is suggest to a generalized obstruction of the airways so if only one like a single phasic means singing phone only single sound is coming means it indicating the airway obstruction if it is a folly or also if the all the like a many or like a wheezing sounds are coming means is because of the obstruction of the any like a large bronchioles or a generalized obstruction of the airways so in which conditions we are going to get the wheeze symptoms so especially is the asthma you are having the asthma so the open the uh, the bronchial walls are not opening properly so the air enter into the bronchioles are very difficult and reach to the alveola in those conditions are going to give the wheezing so especially you are having asthma there going to be the breath uh, period is going to be longer or maybe uh, is going to take the long breaths so is going to get the more wheezing dust and also in the chronic bronchitis like in the like a, in case of like a obstructive disorders and also copd pulmonary edema in case of any like a swelling in the lung also if any accumulation so it may produce in any like a uh, like obstruction in the lungs may give the wheezing sound so another like abnormal sound is the ronchi so ronchi are the low pitched continuous and musical sounds that are similar to the wheeze but this one is the same like is going to be low pitch that's a uh, uh, v is the high pitch one this is like a musical sounds how we are going to play, heard in the musical systems sometimes the so these are going to be like a musical sounds and this usually are imply obstruction of the large airways by secretions if the large airways are obstructed with the secretions any plaque mucus plaques are in uh, the productive cough uh, the sputum uh, and also if you are getting the like a productive cough with the high amount of the sputum may chance to get the wrong kind so that is the abnormal this also abnormal sounds 
so and also striders so is is a in, is an inspiratory musical wheeze so this also type of the wheeze but is going to be like a musical i have heard uh, loudest over the trachea during the inspirations so if we put in you know, the like a stethoscope in the trachea so we are going to heard this striders in case of who are having the abnormality and also is going to be the loudest so it has a uh, uh, suggestive of the obstructed trachea or larynx therefore the consider the medical emergency that requires the immediate attention so who are heard this the tracheal obstructions so they need the immediate obstruction like emergency uh, treatment so have, as soon as possible have to ship the patient to hospital into the emergency department to clear the any obstruction in the trachea so especially for the kids if they swallow any coins or any like a toy item so may chance to get the this type of symptoms especially the striders so another one is another abnormal sound is the is the plural rub so these are the cracking or brushing sounds how we are going to do the brushing how we are going to, the brazil sounds are going to give the same sounds we are going to heard in the the plural surfaces so and also this is because of the plural surface inflamed are roughened and also rough against the each other so if any like obstruction or maybe in case of the any inflammation so it may give the plural rub so there may be is a discontinued and also continuous sound sometimes some is going to get the the give the sound and the cracking sound as well as is continuous cracking sound and or maybe discontinued again is going to continue the sound so this is usually is the localize the particular place on the chest wall and are heard during the both inspiration and also expiration so these are going to heard we are going to heard the both during the inspiration as well as expressions in case of the plural effusion and also pneumothorax in is a pure effusion means any accumulation of the fluids inside the lung so in case of any watery or maybe any like a fluid other extra serous fluids if any accumulation so in those conditions which are called the pleural effusion and also pneumothorax any trapping the air inside the lungs so lung is having the air but if any trapped any particular areas so it's going to give the pleural rub so next one is the mediastinal crunch are also called as hammond sign so these are going to be these crunches like a crackles but that are synchronized with the heartbeat and not in the uh, respirations so these are going to be synchronized is associated with the, like a heartbeat so they have best heard with the patient in the left lateral so in the left lateral positions so they are going to heard the this sounds more commonly so as with the strider our mediastinal crunches should be as treated as the medical emergencies so if anybody having this like a crunches sounds or if is with the striders so it is going to be any obstruction so this is going to be any uh, emergency uh, treatment needed for them so is because of the any swallowing of the any objects so may chance to get uh, this type of sounds and also in case of the uh, pneumonia mediastinum if any obstruction or if any inflammation in the lungs or because of the pneumonia and if any enlargement in the like mediastinum may chance to get the this mediastinal crunch so this position we are going to heard clearly so in the left lateral that would as positions so that means that if they lie on the left side in the lateral side lying positions we are going to heard the this side so this is about the abnormal sounds of the lungs so until now we finished the what are the normal breath sounds and also abnormal breath sounds so normal breath sounds the tracheal breath sounds and also vesicular breath sounds bronchovesicular breath sounds and also next about if we come to the uh, abnormal breath sounds are going to be the strider and wheeze and the crackles and also so these are the abnormal breath sounds so if you understand the normal breath sounds and abnormal breath sounds so we can easily understand the where they having the abnormal breath sounds and what is the cause to factors then we can easily differentially diagnose the different type of the breath sounds so coming to the next the important uh, auscultation of the heart auscultations is uh, through the like a stethoscope so you are going to hear the some heart sounds so what are the heart sounds so these heart sounds are created by the and also the created from the blood flowing through the heart chambers as the cardiac valves are open and also closed during the cardiac cycle cardiac cycle means the the nothing but how the blood circulation is going to be happening throughout the blood or throughout the body so because of the the uh, function of the the heart chambers that is the two atria and two ventricles along with the atrioventricular valves and semilunar valves so because of the atria contraction and ventricular contractions and also how the functions of the atrioventricular valves and semilunar valves so the blood flow is going to be shipped from one place to another place from atria to the ventricles so that we are going to learn in the 
the cardiac cycle. Cardiac cycle means the, the sequence of the cyclical events. So one is the event is going to be because of the blood entering to the atria. So that time the ventricles are going to be open. So if the ventricles are contract, the blood is going to pump into the, the, semi, the semilunar walls, which are the aortic wall and also pulmonary wall. So then how the blood is going to the lung and also from the left ventricle, how the blood is going to the, the throughout the body systemic circulations. So this is the, like a cyclical manner. So this is called uh, the cardiac cycle. So in the cardiac cycle, how the, because of the heart valves, how the like a chambers is going to give the, the sound so we can heard through the heart sounds. So the vibration of these structures, which structures are the atria and ventricles and also atrioventricular valves, that is bicuspid valve and tricuspid valve. Semilunar valves are, is the aortic valve and also pulmonary valves because of the, the turbulence in the, these valves are going to create the sounds. So those are, those are called as the heart sounds. So these are going to be, if you see in the heart, in the normal persons, we are going to hear the, these heart sounds are the four heart sounds. The first two heart sounds are going to be heard in the normal adult. So that is called as the lub dub sounds we are going to hear. So these are going to be the first and second heart sounds. The third and fourth heart sounds also may be heard in some healthy people but can indicate the impairment of the heart functions. So most commonly we are going to sounds. So these are the first and heart, second heart sounds going to be normally. The third or fourth are going to be heard in the normal people, but in case of the, if they're having the cardiac function of normality. So, and also this first and second heart sounds are high pitched. Third and fourth sounds are the, the low pitched. So see, these are the four types of the heart sounds. So where to hear this heart sound why this heart sound going to be occurs. So we are going to discuss here. So if you see the first heart sound, so this first heart sound is produced by the, because of the isometric contraction and also earlier part of the ejection period. So if isometric contraction means, so is because of the atrioventricular closing. So atrioventricular valves means, if you see here the heart chambers, this is the right atrium and this is the left atrium, the right ventricle and left ventricle. So because of the closing of the atrioventricular wall, so if the atria contracts, the blood comes to the ventricles. So during the ventricles contractions, so what happened, this atrioventricular walls are going to be closed. So if because of the closing of the atrioventricular walls, the blood enter into the, from the right side, it enter into the pulmonary wall. From the left side, the blood enter into the aortic wall. So because of the, this contraction of the ventricles, so this, because of the contraction, what happened? These valves are going to be closed. If it is not closed, the blood will go to the atria. So that's the reason this wall, because of this closing, the blood enter into the pulmonary wall and also aortic wall. So in, those, in this time, so it's going to give the, the turbulence, it flows, so it is going to give the love sound. So this is called as the first heart sound. So this is going to be the long and soft, low pitched sound. So it's going to get the, the 0 to 0 0.10 seconds to the 0 0.17 seconds are going to occur. So if you see the total like a cardiac cycle, total cardiac cycle means the contraction of the atria, the blood comes from the superior vena cava to the inferior vena cava. So from it is the enter into the right atrium. From the right atrium, it enter into the right ventricle. From the right ventricle, it going to the pulmonary artery. So from the pulmonary artery, it's going to the lungs. There in the lungs, the gas exchange takes place the carbon dioxide blood converted to oxygen. From the lungs, the blood comes to the pulmonary vein. From the pulmonary vein, the blood will come to the left atrium. From the left atrium, left ventricle. From the left ventricle, it is going to the systemic circulation through the aortic wall. So this is the cyclical manner. So these cyclical manners is, is called as the cardiac cycle. So this all these things takes place the total duration of the cardiac cycle is 0 0.8 seconds. That is means less than one second. So it's going to be, so that means one heartbeat is going to be happening. One heartbeat coming means because of the one cardiac cycle. So in the total, with the one minute, we are going to get the 72 to 80 times heartbeat. That means 80, uh, like 70 to 80 cardiac cycles are going to complete it. So that means the heart functioning, heart pumping is takes place around the 70 to 80 times in one minute. So this is the contraction of the atrioventricular walls, closing of the atrioventricular walls. So this is the one phase of the cardiac cycle. So that time we are going to hear the sound that is the love sound. 
So this is mainly after due to sudden closure of the atrioventricular walls. When they're going to suddenly close, if there is the ventricles are contract. Ventricles are contract, these walls are going to be closed. So the blood is going to enter into the, the right side from the, uh, from the right side is going to the pulmonary wall, from the left side is going to the iota. So that is the mechanism behind the first heart sound. So when we can understand if they're having problem with the, any walls or in the heart, if you see in the is a ECG, in the ECG, if any problem with the atrioventricular walls, so we can we can check in the so where in the ECG, so we are going to this first heart sound is going to found in the R wave. So if you see in the ECG, so this is the ECG ground. So where this is going to be happening because of the closing of the atrioventricular wall, so it's going to get it, it gives at the R wave. So if any abnormality in the R wave, so we can think that. So they're having the problem with the closing of the atrioventricular wall. That is the first heart sound. So they may chance to get the abnormal in the first heart sound. Is it clear? I hope you understand. So that is about the first heart sound. Next about the second heart sound. So this is the onset of the, the diastole. So this is going to be it mainly produce the sudden closure of the semilunar walls. Semilunar walls means is a, in the right side is attached to the pulmonary wall and left side is going to be the aortic wall. So because of the closing of the, this aortic wall and pulmonary wall, we are going to hear the dub sound. So this dub sound, so if it is closing means what is the mechanism? This atrioventricular walls are open. So that time the blood will come from the atria to the ventricle. So if the atria contracts, so these walls are open, which walls? Atrioventricular walls, tricuspid wall, and bicuspid valve is going to be open, the blood flow comes from the atria to the ventricle. So if the atria to its coming filling stage means, so these are, is a uh, sending stage is going to be closed. These valves are going to be closed. So it is going to be short duration and also high pitched sound. This also going to be the 0 0.1 tension, one zero seconds. And also there is a 10, 0 0.10 seconds and 0 0.14 seconds. So this is going to be the, the diastole phase, nothing but the ventricles are going to be relaxed and filling stage. So in this one, if anybody having problem of the, if the semilunar walls problem means we are going to found in the T wave in the ECG, we are going to found at the T wave. So if any like a high peak or maybe low or inversion of the T wave, so we can understand if this is the normal ECG, a normal ECG graph the normal heart function. So if any abnormality, so this wave length and also amplitude are maybe is going to be altered. So if the normal heart sound, we are going to head exactly at the, the uh, because of the, we can commonly see in the, is that uh, T wave, at the T wave in the ECG graph. So in case of a uh, third heart sound, so this third heart sound is going to be produced and also during the rapid filling period of the cardiac cycle. So it's nothing but, is going to be rapid filling when the rapid filling is going to occur. So the ventricular walls and rushing the blood into the ventricles during the rapid filling phase. So the rapid filling phase means suddenly contraction of the atrials. So what happened that time is going to the filling stage, but the initial, the rapid, so it takes time. So it's more than that, like a zero point a normal, like a diastole phase is going to be, uh, in case of diastole phase that time, this diastole phase also has two, type, two stages. One is going to be rapid filling, and that's another one is the slow filling. Rapid filling, so the contra atrias are going to contract. If it's contract, the blood will come immediately to the ventricles. After that, without contracting also, the remaining blood also will come into the, the ventricles. So that is the, is the, the slow rapid, uh, slow filling stage. So this is because of the rapid filling stage. So that is the third heart sounds. So it is produced due to the vibration which set up in the ventricular wall due to the rushing of the blood into the ventricles during the rapid, rapid ventricular phase. So this going to the vibration takes place because of the rapid filling. So it gives the third, vent, th third heart sound. So this third heart sounds is going to appear between the T wave and also P wave in the ECG. So here we are going to see in between the, the third wave and also here is going to after ending. So if it goes again, if it cardiac, another cardiac cycle starts means it's going to start with the P wave. See here. So this is going to end up the T wave, this one. So again, start the P wave, Q, R, S, T. Again, is going to start with the P wave. So this is the normal cardiac cycles are going to be happening. So if you see in the ECG who are having the normal 
a heart function, we are going to see the P wave, all the waves are going to be the same pattern. You are having abnormality, if there any ventricular contraction or any maybe the atrial contractions. So we are going to found the, the differentiation in the showing at the P waves and QRS and T waves. So we can easily understand if which wave is the like a prolonged time or shorter durations. So it depends upon the involvement of the segment in the heart, either the ventricle or atria, we can easily understand in the ECG. So this third wave is going to be the third heart sound is going to be appeared, is going to in between the T wave and also next is going to start continuously with the P wave. So in between here is going to get the third heart sound. Is it clear? This is third heart sound. Is we can commonly see in the third and fourth heart sounds are going to be heard in the the very rare in the healthy people who are having the like a, a healthy like a heart uh, dysfunction. And it's coming to the fourth heart sound. So these fourth heart sounds are going to be produced during the atrial systole and also considered as the physiologic heart sounds. Atrial systole time means this atria is going to get the contraction. So if the atria contracts, so that time what happened? So these walls are going to be open. So it occurs due to the vibration which set up in the atrial musculature during the atrial systole. So the sound because of the atrial systole. So the fourth one is, is because of the ventricular, rapid ventricular filling. So because of the rapid ventricular filler, the, it will give the vibration sensor. So that is the third heart tone. So the vibration sense because of the atrial walls. So this is the fourth heart sound. So it is also short and also low pitched sound. The duration will be very, very minimal because of the only 0 0.02 to 0 0.04, very fraction of seconds only it going to give the sound. So that's why these sounds are going to be heard in the abnormal, who are having the abnormal heart sounds or abnormal function of the heart. So what are the causes of this uh, fourth heart sounds are going to be the vibration we set up in the atrial musculature during the atrial systole. Atrial systole means in case of the atrial contraction, the contraction time, the initial, the, the, the faster, uh, the initial zero, the, between the 0 0.02 0 .02 to 0 0.04, the fraction of seconds, it's going to give the vibration sensation. So that time we are going to hurt the sound. So it's going to be more at the coincide with the, the interval between the P and also QR wave. So it's going to hurt at the, at the P wave. So it is going to give the, uh, like a sounds, there. So that means the initial of the contraction, initial, for example, uh, if you know the conduction of the heart, the conduction which starts from the uh, sinoatrial node in the atria. So here the uh, PA, uh, uh, that is the sinoatrial SA node is there. From the SA node is going to be the AV node is there in between the atrioventricular wall. So from here is going to be the conduction starts from the SA node. So that time what happened, the signals comes from the SA node. So it's the atria AV node means that time the atria is going to get the contraction. In that period, so it's going to get the fourth heart sound. So in the ECG, we are going to hear the, this fourth heart sound in between the P wave and also Q wave. So it is going to be the fourth heart sound. So what are the areas? So where we are going to found these areas, where we can hear the first heart sound, where we can hear the second heart sounds. So this one is, you can see the mitral and also bicuspid area and tricuspid area. Next one is the pulmonary area and aortic area. So these areas we are going to hurt. So these are heart sounds. So at the over the, the mitral and also bicuspid area. So mitral or bicuspid area is situated in the left intercostal space. If you count the intercostal space. So if you hear the first, second, third, fourth, and fifth, so here is going to hurt the fifth intercostal space. We are going to hurt the, the mitral or bicuspid wall. So you can see here mitral wall, the wall which is connected between the left atrium to the left ventricle. And also tricuspid valve is going to hurt uh, located between the right atrium to the right ventricle. So this the mitral or bicuspid wall is going to be in between the, so it located at the fifth intercostal space. So exactly where at the uh, cardiac apex is there. So cardiac apex is going to be located at the fifth intercostal space. So the mitral wall sound heard near to the, this region. So especially the, in the fifth intercostal space at the apex beat. So if any abnormality in the, like a, the beat in the apex, so it indicates the, the problem in the, any problem in the bicuspid wall. 
are also called as a microsphere. So why we have to know, and also we have to check the, the my, tricuspid wall, and also it's present over the zephyte process, like in the sternum bone, that's the ending, the tip of the bone is called a zephyte process. So this is going to hurt the tricuspid, so sound is best to hurt these regions. So why we have to hurt these things? So if the first and the second heart sounds, the first heart sound, especially because of the, uh, it gives the closure of the atrioventricular walls, which are the bicuspid wall and tricuspid wall. So we can hurt at the, the Zephyr process, as well as the fifth intercostal space, we are going to hurt at the apex. So if there is sound, the normal sounds are going to be the first, first heart sound we are going to hurt. So this area is the first heart sound we are going to clearly heard in this Zephyr process, and also at the apex of the beat. So coming to the next one is the other auscultation areas are the pulmonary area and also aortic area. So these are the semilunar walls. So these are going to be present over the second intercostal space. This is close to the sternum. So you can easily understand here. So here is going to be the, just now we discussed the tricuspid wall near to the sternum and also mitral wall. So it's the fifth intercostal space. So coming to the, is the aortic position and also aortic wall and also pulmonary wall. So these are going to be the areas intercostal space and also this is going also going to be second intercostal space. But this is going to be close to the sternum. So it's the left side, the pulmonary is going to be the left side and also aortic is going to be the right side, near to the right side. So it's going to be the right intercostal space we will hear the aortic area. So these are going to be the aortic and this is going to be the pulmonary. So these are the auscultation areas for the lungs. So we can hear the like a first heart sound and also a second heart sounds. So second heart sound is best heard in these areas. So especially in the second intercostal space, in the right side and also left second intercostal space. So these heart sounds are where we are going to heard in the, uh, at this uh, pulmonary area as well as the aortic area. So these are the auscultation areas of the lung, uh, sorry, the heart. So the first heart sound and second heart sound. And also where is the, exactly the auscultation areas. So that's all about the auscultation of the heart or the lung heart sounds. So here we discuss, so first one is we discuss about the, what is the auscultation? So what instrument we are going to use the auscultation? So what is the stethoscope? So what are the parts of the stethoscopes? So which uh, part we are going to use for the high pitch sound and which part is going to for the low pitch sound? So we discuss and also what are the like a, a special precaution measures we have to take while checking the auscultation? So we, where we have to check the auscultations, which room and also what's the position of the patient and also what is the normal heart sounds, what is the normal lung sounds, what is the abnormal lung sounds. So, and also where we are going to hurt the normal one, what the conditions are going to face the abnormal sounds, we already discussed. So coming to the, this one is the heart sounds. In the heart sound, we discuss about the four heart sounds and what is the normal heart sounds, what is the abnormal heart sounds. So in where we are going to the auscultate these heart sounds. So that's all about the auscultation. So that's all about the lung sounds and also heart sounds. Hope you understand. If you have any doubts, you can ask me. I can explain clearly the message. And also maybe if you practice in the clinical practice, if you go to the like a clinical placement area, if you're practicing on the patients, you can understand, you can differentiate very easily what type of sound we can commonly heard in the what type of the patient conditions. So this will come uh, the, if you are, if you want to master this type of auscultation procedures, you have to uh, thoroughly to practice on the patients, you have to differentiate what type of the sound, is it crackle sound, or is it ronchi or striders in the lung sounds, or is it what is the normal, what is the abnormal, and also in the heart sounds also, you have to know where exactly we are going to hurt the first heart sounds. So is it a high pitched or low pitched? So then you can compare. So this everything will come in the, under the, on the practice. So this one is a theory based, then you, if you want to master, you have to practice the longer time and also they can understand about the what type of the duration and pitch and intensity, then only you can understand clearly. That's all about the lung sounds and also heart sound. Okay, thank you very much. See you in the next class.